Hello, Hi Rock. Welcome to our daily devotional. We are continuing with our exploration of the fruit of the Spirit. And this week, we're going to be looking at the fruit that is called peace. Uh, Richard Lee uh, uh, gave a sermon this Sunday about peace and really focused on Peter and the disciples in the midst of the storm when Jesus comes to them walking on the water. And he was clear uh, in his sermon, one of the central ideas, or perhaps the central idea, is that peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence, the powerful presence of God, especially in the midst of those storms. So we're going to be in uh, one of the passages that he uh, quoted from in the in the sermon, uh, Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. Uh, when you first hear this, you may sound like we forgot that joy was last week and we're moving on to peace, uh, but just hold on for a bit and you'll see uh, where this leads to peace. So we are in Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7, where we read the following. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which succeeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, um, given this context, uh, this piece uh, that's referred to um, can have different interpretations. And, and probably the most common I've heard used for the piece that's talked about here is the, the general sense of uh, tranquility, that the, the peace of God will guard our hearts and minds in Jesus. That in some sense, uh, rather than having anxiety, we'll have this uh, um, unexplainable, mysterious, spirit-given sense of peace, which will prevent us from experiencing uh, these kinds of upsets and anxieties that might otherwise uh, disrupt our connection with God. And, and that, of course, might be the case. But I, I wonder, given the larger context of Philippians, and especially in this passage, if the peace that's being talked about here is not just this subjective peace that we experience somehow miraculously, but rather that uh, true peace with God, as in the cessation of hostilities, where we are we are now uh, at one with God relationally, that we have we have reconciled with God, that that peace will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, it will help produce this peace that we have or can have with one another, that we can actually heal the wounds and experience a a coming together that might not otherwise be possible. Uh, but whichever it is, uh, I think it's interesting that. Um, the connection here is that peace doesn't just stand on its own. In this passage, we see this uh, imperative to rejoice, to, to express our joy, uh, to be considerate, or in some translations, to be gentle, let our gentleness be evident to all, that we be engaged in uh, continual prayer and, and thanksgiving, that you know, gratitude in many ways is going to be this thing that's also going to connect us with, uh, continue to connect us with God. And as I think about each of those things, they, they certainly would help produce, I could see why they would help produce a sense of tranquility in us, but I also see how they would be the very things that could help bridge the divides and the conflicts that we have. Like how, how much harder would it be to continue in bitterness and dispute with one another if we are truly taking the time to rejoice and let our gentleness be evident to all? Can you truly be in uh, you know divisive conflict with one another, if your gentleness and consideration is being made evident to all, uh, and if we're continually engaged in prayer and gratitude, constantly remembering all the things that that God has given to us and promised to us, and 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 the the wonderful riches that we have in Christ, would we still be involved in the otherwise petty squabbles that we tend to find ourselves in? I think that these things um, may my my sense is that given the context, I believe that. This peace of God truly is reconciliation with God that also then helps us to be in a different place so that and through the power of the Spirit that we can be reconciled with one another. And that certainly will help produce this kind of tranquility, this, this sense of peace, because we truly are at uh, peace with one another. Um, just as kind of my own story, uh, when I became a believer, I found uh, some of this effect immediately taking place in my life. I told all my friends and family what was going on. And I found uh, there was a, a, a renewed desire in me to, to, to reconcile with my mom. Uh, I, I confessed to my brother Eugene 
uh, so many things that I had not even been willing to admit before. And uh, he was very willing to forgive me. My brother, Sean, when I called him up, he was like, his re initial response was, you're the last person I ever expected. And, and that produced all these conversations where we were able to, to come together in ways that I just don't think would have been otherwise possible. My dad initially was not very uh, supportive. He, he felt it was just uh, a crutch, uh, a kind of maybe this thing that I needed because I was such a damaged human being. I needed this kind of uh, crutch that God loves me, that somehow that would help me. And, but what I saw over time as, uh, you know, God began, you know, continued to work in me. Um, I, my dad softened and, and eventually, you know, he was, he wrote a letter to me telling me how thankful he was that God was in my life and that God had become the father that he had failed to be in so many ways. And, and, and my dad is now going to church every week and he's at part of an active community and all these things. And I, so I see this fruit of where the peace with God in me helped produce this peace in my family in ways that I couldn't have imagined and certainly couldn't have expected. Uh, Dave, I'm wondering what you see here and the connection with uh, the peace that we're promised as a fruit of the spirit. You know, uh, the first thing that strikes me here is it, it says, um, verse six, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And we've all heard that many, many times if you've been a Christian for a long time uh, and almost everybody ignores it. Um, and we instead worry about everything and don't pray about anything. Um, but but here's the real thing. Oftentimes when we start to pray about it, and this is one of the reasons why we don't pray about these things very often, so we find it doesn't help. In fact, it makes it worse. But here's the reason. Is what we do oftentimes is we bring this thing to God and ask him to worry with us. We worry in God's presence. And so I, and I see so oftentimes when people who are, are really bent up about something or someone or whatever, they, they come to God and instead of being able to find God's peace, they want God to take on their chaos, right? Their fear, mm -hmm. their anxiety, you know, all this. They want God to take that and share it. So now, oh, God's with me in my fear. How wonderful. Uh, and yet that's not actually helpful at all. Um, and so the idea is that God will be with you in your circumstance, but the point of God being there is now you don't need, you can be there without having to be afraid anymore. But the only way that we can do that is if we see God more than we see whatever this thing is that we're worried about. And that's why I think that a key to be able to pray about something instead of worrying about something in God's presence is the, uh, the, the second half. It says, first, tell God what you need. And thank him for all that he has done. And why is it? Oh, it's because God's really insecure and just wants to make sure that he gets proper credit for all the stuff he did. No, that's not why, why, why Paul's writing this. He's writing this because he wants you to experience peace. And the way you will experience peace is you'll tell God what you need. And then you'll thank God for giving you all the things that you needed in the past the way that God has met your needs every time in the past, the way that God has delivered you from circumstances every bit as bad as this in the past. And as you concentrate on that, as you remember God has done this and God has done this and God has done this. Okay, God, now I'm in this situation. I wonder what you're going to do next, right? It, it actually can stir anticipation instead of anxiety. And, and I think that so much is the key to be able to appropriate the peace that God makes possible. Uh, and, and I think the, the other thing I'd want to say is that uh, he says this, um, well, I could maybe two things. The first is that uh, so many people want the peace of God, right? We, we want to have God's peace. We want to have this incredible tranquility and sort of this kind of like, you know, true Zen, you know, just unbothered and unflustered. Uh, and yet the, the real thing that God offers is the peace with God. And, and that's actually what happened in, in, in the death and resurrection of Jesus, right? As he, as he took on all of our sin, as he paid the punishment for it, now we can have peace with God. And that's what allows us to come face to face. We can come before God's throne. We can pray directly. We don't have to pray through anybody anymore. We don't have to ask things from Jesus. We can, we can just we can go right, right to God and say, hey, I'm going to ask myself Right? I don't need to get some saint to pray for me. I can pray myself because God has made peace between us. God has made peace between us. Jesus is our peace. 
And because I have peace with God, now I can have the peace of God. Because now I know that God is for me, that God is with me, that God is in me, and that God will be with me wherever I am and whatever happens. I think knowing all of that is what allows us to really have peace. Okay, now the final thing. I'd said that before, but now I mean it. The final thing is uh, that, that very last part. He says, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And I like that phrase. Uh, the word, uh, the, the Greek word here, literally, it means, you know, to guard. It actually often is translated as, you know, kind of like protect uh, or, 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 you know, it talks about a jailer keeping somebody in custody, like you're watching over them, making sure they don't, they don't get away. That God's peace will protect us, will guard us, it, 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 our hearts and our minds as we live in Christ Jesus. And that's the, the uh, I think what it makes it kind of makes obvious is our, what our experience is that we're under attack, right? It's not just that I go out and make a mistake. No, 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 no. Satan is coming for me. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour. He's coming for you. And so even if you don't go and kind of go into the wrong place and do the wrong thing, it doesn't mean that anxiety and fear and, and all these things aren't going to come for you. They will. But God's peace can guard you as we walk with Christ, as we live in Christ, as we really kind of lean into Christ and just recognize that we're going to need that guarding. And so sometimes people are like, oh, I'm under attack. And I think, yeah, you may well be under attack. That's, that's more than a figure of speech. It's a reality. And we do need God to guard us, but we have a guard who's a God who's happy to guard us. And so that we can experience peace, not, and this goes right back to the thing you said in the beginning that came from Richard's sermon. It, we, we can have God's peace, not because all the threats are gone, mm -hmm. but because God is with us in the face of every threat. It's the powerful presence of God, as you said earlier. Yeah, the, the image of uh, Peter uh, and the disciples in that boat when Jesus is coming on the water and, and, and Peter actually gets out of the boat. He takes that step of faith and he's beginning to walk on the water. Then it says that like he saw the wind. And I always love that image. Like you you might feel the wind, you might see this, the waves, but it says he saw the wind. And I, I don't know what to take of that, but it's like a, it just, I don't know. I think it's a, a very um, powerful image that there's something in this that he's experiencing visually and, and he loses that connection. He loses that faith, maybe even just loses the faith that, that he can walk out to Jesus when Jesus calls him, that he can do what God called him to do. Cause you know, Jesus says, come to me. Right. And, and Peter is obeying and, and initially that obedience is going really well, but I think he sees the wind. And I think, um, you know, for all of us, it's really, when we're sitting down and we're reading this together, it's 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 easier maybe to believe in some of these kind of abstract realities that we haven't fully experienced yet. But when we see the wind, when we see the the storm around us, it's really hard to hold on to those things. But I, I love how uh, you know Jesus lifts him out of the water and and all of that. And and you know Richard's image that really peace is not knowing that we're not going to fail or that we can overcome every obstacle or the obstacles aren't there. They are there, but rather peace is this powerful presence of God in the midst of that storm that even when we fail in our obedience, God can uh, lift us out of that and call us back. Amen. Well, John, do you want to close us in prayer today? I would love to. Our good and gracious God, we thank you that you are the one who made and offered peace with us that you made a way for us to be at peace with you you made a, the what you made the way of the cross lord uh, i i know that there's just no way we can fully appreciate this reality now and, and maybe not even ever but lord i pray that you make this reality more and more real to us each day so that we might more and more trust you and your ability and desire your willingness desire to protect us from everything that might truly harm us. Lord, in all of these things, I pray that we would be drawn closer and closer to you and know that you stand guard over us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Friends, we're so glad that you were with us today. All week, we're going to be talking about peace and goodness knows in our current world, we all need God's peace. So I hope you'll join us tomorrow.